My friends, we're going to do a love reading. So if you feel called to stay and watch this reading, I'm sure there's a reason based on the title or maybe you're, you know, just feeling called to listen to this message. Um, we're going to get right into it. First, I want to thank um, Chad for this deck. Oh, let's, let's not start with that card. Well, maybe we need to start with that card. <laughs> Um, so this is the deck. I can't even remember what it's called. Hang on. It's called the Tarot of Sacred Kingdoms. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm in love with it. Thank you, Chad, so much for this deck. Um, I did use it in another reading, but I forgot to uh, mention this deck until halfway through the reading. So I'm hoping that Chad sees this message, but thank you for this deck. I believe this is one I've wanted for a while. Um, and the reason I said we need to keep this card is because on the bottom of the deck of the black deck that I chose um, to kind of see what's in your energy, we have addiction and mirror. Um, so it feels right away, you know, with addiction on the bottom, it says codependency, obsess obsession, possession, controlling, has a block restraint. And then when I flipped over the top card, it was the devil. So I was like, maybe there's a message there. Um, so you could be someone who is, I'm, affirmation just popped down, I am the light. So it could be that you are connected to someone where you shone a light on their shadows, on some of their you know, devil energy could be a Capricorn, you could be a Capricorn. Or it could be that, you know, this person triggered within you your codependency, you know, like maybe you were really codependent on this attachment. Maybe you've been super obsessed with this person. Maybe you've been, you know, trying to control the outcome or hanging out, trying to hold on to control. Take it as it resonates. Um, but let's see what's coming towards you, my friends. So thank you, Chad, for that deck. Um, you guys are so nice. Underneath, we have mirror, mirroring each other, self-image, relationships reflect our wounds, introspection. And we have this card, addiction, codependency. So this person could have triggered some unhealed, unresolved trauma within you possibly from your childhood, and you could have done the same for this person. I'm even, I'll go out on a limb here and say this feels, you know, with this mirror card, you and this person could have been counterparts. Um, and, you know, when you're a counterpart and you don't know you're a counterpart, it, it can feel like you are, you know, obsessed with this person or you feel this uncontrollable not uncontrollable it's like an unbreakable type of energy or like you can't seem to stop thinking about them or thinking about what happened between you um anyway take it as it resonates we're gonna see what's coming towards you or what energy is surrounding you and then we'll get some tarot we have acts breakup separation so i'm again it very much feels like you and this person were mirroring each other, triggering each other, triggering unhealed wounds, triggering each other's shadows in order to possibly even be awakened, but in order to shine a light on those shadows and heal them. Remember that drop down, I am the light. So you, again, you could have really... Um, triggered this person or vice versa or both I'm hearing both we have wedding rings um soul connection I just saw twin flames okay we'll see what wants to come out now we have girl with the snake so I'm just gonna say it what I've been seeing an awful lot lately are what I think are counterpart connections um being mistaken for, you know, how can I put this? I don't want to start re-recording this, so now I have to finish this thought. Um, but it's so easy to label people nowadays. It's so easy to, I saw a great thing about it yesterday that because of mental health TikTok, which 
myself, I got a lot from mental health TikTok and it started kind of my my healing process, seeing everybody healing on TikTok. But then there's so much information and misinformation out there that everyone is now being labeled different things. So like I saw a thing yesterday, welcome to mental health TikTok, where anyone who doesn't agree with you or want you or is mean is labeled a narcissist and things like that. I have girl with a snake here and it's empath narcissist paradigm. And again, you could have been someone who was that girl with the snake, that empath, um, and maybe your counterpart had, you know, some toxic tendencies, and perhaps from the connection, you were meant to learn how to put up boundaries and, you know, not overlook red flags, things like that, and this person was meant to you know, become more compassionate, more empathetic, things like that. Um, so you could be someone who, you know, felt like you were in that narcissist empath paradigm. Um, and then we have photograph, looking at your photos, missing you nostalgia. <clears throat> so let's see what comes out, my friends. Let's see what is surrounding your energy right now. We have the chaser. So you could have been someone who was chasing this person. Like you could have been someone who they were presenting toxic traits to you. And you could have been like chasing that, um, overlooking red flags, not respecting your worth, things like that. It says chaser and a codependent connection, fear of abandonment issue. And you know, sometimes in connections like that, the lesson the chaser is supposed to be learning is that they should be standing up for themselves, even if they do fear abandonment, um, that their self-respect and their self-worth is more important than, you know, the, the toxicity I'm hearing. Um, anyway, definitely chaser energy. It came out twice because we had addictions on the bottom and the chaser. So it feels, again, if you're not resonating with this, not your reading. Um, it feels like you're healing some chaser wounds, you know? So let's see what else comes out. That was weird. I don't know if you saw that. My thumb just went like that a bunch of times before that card came out. We have heartbreak and pain and we have twin flames. I told you. So separation between you and your counterpart and you could be someone who soul contract on the bottom you could be someone who you know felt stabbed in the back by this person and maybe you were one of those people who were like my person's just a narcissist um over that is so overused and people on tiktok you me we can't diagnose that a doctor has to diagnose that and again it's over I cannot stress that enough. It's overused in social media. And that's a lesson that I went through like two years ago where I was like, everybody's a narcissist and my person's a narcissist. And uh, anyway, so it does feel like, you know, you were chasing a connection where maybe this person was not treating you in the best way and you kept pursuing it or you kept chasing them. It could be that you are connected to someone who, you know, stabbed you in the back or there's a separation and you don't understand why do I still feel this connection with this person? Um, like you could be energetically feeling that chasing energy. Um, and then we have twin flames, which is what I was... Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, and it says have faith, love is coming. So let's see what else comes out. My friends, what do we have here? We have an ending bringing a new beginning. So there was an ending between you. It says growth, change, liberation. So you could have freed yourself from a connection where you felt there was toxicity toxicity or you know you were being mistreated and guess what that's part of your lesson is liberating yourself and growing from that energy 
and to, you know, stop chasing somebody who's treating you like that. Um, and here we have endings bring new beginnings and we have you in separation with this person. So when this connection ended, when you liberated yourself and detached from it, or you tried, I, you could still be struggling with codependency, um, codependent thinking, you could just be feeling, you know, like that connection, you know, um, but when there was an ending between you, it caused change and growth. Um, let's see what else we have here. We have third party interference. So there could have been third party interference here. Um, and you could be someone who like, you don't understand the twin flames is coming out. And a lot of people find the information of twin flames because they're in a connection where they're like, or they feel a codependent attachment to someone. And they're like, I don't understand why I feel this way. Like, they stabbed me in the back. There was a third party. Why the heck do I still feel this soul connection? Because everybody on the internet will tell you, you know, differently. But anyway, um, <laughs> I don't want to get too ranty. Um, so like I said, it could be that, you know, you were confused about why if this person did all these things, do I still feel this connection with them? Like, and you could be frustrated with that, you know? Um, <clears throat> we have passion on the bottom, insane chemistry, very magnetic bond, you know? Let's keep going. We have union coming out, engagement. Partnership, commitment, eternity, completion, union. Please tell me more, spirit. You could have thought you were going to marry this person I'm hearing. We have passion, insane chemistry coming out again. What is this? For some of you, you could be someone who is trying to date. Like you could be someone who, you know, is in separation with a counterpart or you're in separation with someone who you felt, you know, betrayed by, stabbed in the back from, and you could be trying to date and like still feeling this chasing energy towards that past person. Um, this person could have suddenly started dating someone else after this separation and that could have left you feeling, you know, very stabbed in the back. Like this person could have broken up with you or told you they, you know, didn't want to be with anyone or they weren't in the mental headspace for a relationship or whatever it was. And then they could have turned around and started dating someone else, leaving you feeling very stabbed in the back. And like I said, you could be someone who is like, why do I still have feelings for this person? Why do I still think about them? Why do I still look on their social media? If you are, um, chaser came out twice. So for some of you, you may be, you know, someone who's energetically chasing. We have the golden mirror and photograph. So It feels to me like you're dealing with someone who, you know, has some toxic tendencies. Um, and again, I feel like you are shining a light on those traits in them. And they're shining a light on your possibly codependent, um, codependent traits. We have, you know, someone who you're attached to in that narcissistic energy thinking about you looking at pictures of you reflecting about you missing you um what song is that that's an old one i don't know who sings it don't ask me who i'm just hearing do you want to take my picture because i don't remember or something like that it's an old one um it's from like when I was a teenager. So, <laughs> so someone missing you and, you know, you could be trying your best not to chase this person right now. 
Let's just get a few more. Okay, so I forgot to mention this one earlier, so that's probably why it came out. We have soul connection confirmed. Wedding rings, commitment. This is a soul connection. But we have needs time, takes time, in time, cycles, time to heal, progress. Um, what time is that? That looks like um, 145? No, 1245. So 1245 could be symbolic in some way. Um, but it, it's clear to me that, you know, I'm going to be really honest with what I'm seeing here. I'm seeing a twin flame connection where, again, I've said it already, you triggered shadows within each other and there needed to be a separation here and there needed to be time and healing here and reflection. So like you could be someone who... For some of you, you could be someone who's, you know, not seeing the lesson in it yet, you know, um, not realizing the lesson in it that especially about you being a chaser. And I'm not here like if you're not a chaser, you're not a chaser. Like, don't don't be triggered by me. <laughs> like, you know, if you're a chaser, just like I knew when I discovered chasing, when I discovered, you know, that energy, it was like a, whoa, it's like a, whoa moment. Like, a I am chasing, like I am, I am anxious attachment, you know? So you could be someone who's very anxious attachment. So the more anxious you feel about a connection or the less somebody talks to you, maybe you talk to them more. <laughs> maybe you like attach on, you know, again, I'm not here to judge you. I can only talk to you about this because I've learned about it all. Um, so that's what we're seeing here. And, you know, that this cycle needs time to heal. Healing takes time. Healing doesn't happen overnight. Um, so maybe it's been a while since you've heard from this person. Um, I'm not seeing any movement yet. So it's just like the situation and that it needs time to simmer is what I'm hearing. Let's just see one more. We have, yeah, it's like there's, I'm not seeing any movement here yet. We have breakup, separation, stop the pattern. So there was a pattern repeating that needed, the only way to stop it is to separate, you know? Um, so again, you could be someone who's learning about what it means to be a chaser. Or again, you could be someone, I'm just repeating myself all over the place. You could be someone who's like, why do I still feel connected to this person? Why do I still care about them, even though they hurt me and they stab me in the back? And that's that unconditioned twin flames. That's that unconditional love that you're feeling. You know, let me just talk about unconditional love for a minute, like the misconception about unconditional love. You People overuse that. They say, I unconditionally love you. I unconditionally love you. And then, you know... I'm just going to paint a picture. I'm not trying to make excuses for this person. But then this person, you know, cheats on you. And you're like, I don't love them anymore. No way. Conditional love. And Twin Flames, it's a frustrating journey. But it brings you into, like, true unconditional love. So you could be someone who, like I said, is going through that energy of why do I still love this person if they did all these things to me? Um, look for the lesson is what I'm hearing. This feels twin flames. So I'm going to go with that. <clears throat> that's what I was feeling before that card even came out. And that's, you know, what I feel. I'm getting the hint that that's what I'm supposed to be doing <laughs> is channeling twin flames. So that's what we're going to do. <laughs> um, so I'm actually going to grab a twin flame deck. Somebody ghosted. So this person could have ghosted you, avoidant. And you could be, you know, why do I still feel connected to this person? Why do I still want to talk to them? Even though they're telling me to my face that, you know, whatever they're telling you to your face. Um, underneath we have cosmic healing. Interesting. Um, really quick, somebody asked me why I shuffle so much. It's because that's part of my channeling process. So I'm not... Every different, every reader is different. 
I was just saying every reader is different and part of my channeling process is to shuffle. It's just the way that I intuitively read. Um, I get a lot of downloads when I'm shuffling and I also believe it's, you know, getting the energy through the deck. Um, and that's why I do it. <laughs> we have acceptance. And, you know, for those of you who are like, I'm just going to fast forward through my shuffling, you're missing, you're missing messages because I get a lot of messages when I'm shuffling. Um, so we do have acceptance. So you could be trying to release, remember that chaser energy. You could be trying to release control of this situation. You could be trying to release this person. You could be saying, you know, to yourself, I just heard a glass break in my house. It's fine. Um, <laughs> but I just heard a glass smash. So you could have, you know, had a realization about this person that, you know, you need to release the current version of them. Like, let's say... Maybe you were chasing someone who kept repeating a cycle, kept repeating a cycle, kept mistreating you. And maybe you're realizing right now that maybe you're coming into acceptance that you need to release that current version of them, you know, and if they want to come in healed and healthy, remember that healing card, then you're open to it. But anyway, we do have acceptance, so we're trying to come into acceptance. Maybe you are accepting your chaser tendencies I find that usually like I, I, I've i been exactly where you are and like things used to trigger me and I always say if they're triggering you there must be something in it that's un like there's something unhealed within you being triggered and you know I would watch tarot readings and I would have my ego on high alert and I'd be like I'm not a chaser <laughs> I laugh at myself I laugh at myself now because I am such a chaser. <laughs> like I'm from the moment I was a kid, I've had, you know, an addictive personality anyway. Unconditional love. Remember what I was just talking about. And again, it's interesting when you like so many people can say they unconditionally love someone. Um, even, you know, I've seen parents say, I unconditionally love my child. And then their child comes out to them and they're like, get out of my house. Like, that's conditional love. Or like, anyway, I think that if you're a divine feminine, this journey is meant to teach you unconditional love. And it can be frustrating. It can be frustrating and triggering. We have psychic abilities. So as I was about to, this feels like a reading for a divine feminine that's in a situation where, you know, there does need to be time and healing. Um, I was just going to mention something to you. We have psychic abilities. So I feel like um, you could be experiencing downloads about this person. You could be someone who, you know, has found tarot or got into tarot because of this connection and because of the fact that if it was anybody else, you'd just be like, I know my worth, please don't treat me like that. But you have a soul connection with this person. Again, I'm not here to make excuses. Now with psychic ability, I I have to mention this because I was planning on doing a divine feminine reading and that's kind of what this feels like. Um, but I don't know if it will be a divine feminine reading. I'm not talking about gender. But I listened to something yesterday. I listened to... There's a lot of misinformation out there about Twin Flames, and I listen to a lot, and I research a lot. It's my special interest. Well, tarot, spirituality, special interest. Um, but I listened to a thing yesterday that if, apparently, divine feminines need to find their soul purpose and be on their soul's path, their higher calling, their mission, because every divine feminine apparently has a mission, um, in order to come into union. So if you're someone who's been chasing this person and you're someone who feels like you have psychic abilities, get on that is what I'm saying. Um, I'm serious. Um, I, I always heard, you know, 
I never speak in absolutes, but this thing that I was listening to yesterday really was like, you cannot come into union if you do not align with your soul path. It's part of the contract in order to align with your counterpart. Um, You know, there's a lot of misconceptions out there about twin flames being about love. Yes, it's about love, but it's more about you. It's about your journey into reprogramming yourself, healing all of your wounds, finding self-love, learning how to love yourself, you know, unconditionally, unconditional love for the masculine, finding your soul path. Um, It's so much more about you. Um, So, you know, for those of you, and I get messages for those of you who are in it for union and are telling me like I've had people tell me I don't I don't have I don't want to be a light worker I don't want to get on my soul path I just want my person back I don't want to do the healing I just want my person back not gonna work that's not what this journey is about anyway So if you have been someone who's been hesitating, moving towards your soul path, hoping that your person is going to come waltzing back in, um, this is your sign to get working on your soul path. Psychic abilities again. I'm going to do it. I'm going to shuffle one more time. Incoming communication. What the heck is that about? You could be you could be waiting for incoming communication. Remember we were talking about chasing? So you could be someone. Maybe you've experienced incoming communication. Maybe you've experienced communication from this person and your chaser energies are being ripped open. Like maybe you're finding yourself energetically chasing this person again or obsessing about this person. I just had to pause it for a second. Maybe you find yourself, you know, obsessing over when this person is going to reach out or obsessing over how much they're talking to you. Um, Incoming communication, you could be energetically like picking up your phone a lot, seeing if they messaged you. Like, is there a message? Is there a message? Is there a message? Chasing. So we have Dark Knight of the Soul. So again, you could be someone who's, you know, having all these realizations or about to, maybe you've recently been through this. Um, Do I want to divide you? I just kind of, I meant between you and your person, or do I just want to see what's going on with you? Because this feels like it's you. This feels like it's a reading for someone who is, you know, in the middle of silence with their person. Um, dark night of the soul, you know, this is where you realize that the things we've been taught, the things we've been told to believe are a bunch of crap. Um, this happens, you know, when I talk about counterparts, this happens after usually the dark, the dark night of the soul for the feminine happens after there's been a separation. So after, you know, there's been a painful separation, Um, But let's get into it. What needs to come out for you? Inner union. So that's part of coming into union. You cannot come into union with your counterpart until you truly love yourself and until they love themselves. And again, for the people who are like, you can't fake loving yourself. Okay, you cannot fake loving yourself. Um, I've tried. (laughs) You can't just be like, well, I think I'm good enough. You know, I think I'm pretty great. Loving yourself means inner union means it's so weird that I watched that video yesterday that talked about all of this. The timing, you know, inner union means truly. It means that you love yourself as much as you love your divine masculine. It means you love yourself more in in a sense um you can't fake this part this inner union um you truly have to come into inner union with yourself knowing your worth loving yourself loving your shadows you know um and believing i'm hearing trusting in the journey or like trusting 
that you're always in union with your person. I'm honestly thinking, like, I'm just going to keep this about you right now, my friend, because that's what it feels like. So let's see what else comes out for you. We have healing. Healing was in reverse. Not that I take reversals in this deck, but it was in reverse. So there could be something that, you know, you're missing, a lesson that you're missing or healing that you still have to do. Um, and as you come into in your inner union with yourself, love yourself, your person experiences the benefit of, or like they experience that as well. So if you're healing, if you're a counterpart and you're coming into union with yourself and focusing on your soul path and doing the inner work and healing and moving forward and not just, you know, waiting around for this person to come back, then this person is also going to change and evolve because you're connected. But if you're the person who's like, I don't want to heal, I just want my person. I don't want to get on my soul path. I just want my person or I just want to be rid of their energy. Anyway, I heard something else that you need to come into an acceptance that this, this journey isn't happening to you to hurt you, to ruin your life. It's happening for you. It's happening to help you grow and evolve and step into your gift, things like that. So as long as you have that energy that it's happening to you as like some sort of punishment or why me, blockage, that's something that needs to be healed. Um, anyway, this is very, very counterparty. So I saw... I saw this on the bottom, which I want to talk about. We have Ar Archangel Michael. I don't know why I always overthink how to pronounce that. We have Archangel Michael, and this is divine protection. So this separation between you probably happened um, for your own divine protection because you maybe weren't ready to stand in your boundaries. Maybe you kept chasing this person, like I said, and maybe... Archangel Michael stepped in and said, you know what, you need to stop chasing this person because they need to heal. And you need to heal. It's divine protection. It's also divine guidance, I'm hearing. Um, and look, we have right person, wrong time. And I'll say it, I, I really find it sad when people have such a closed mind, um, especially all the, the, the information on the internet now. Um, that opinion of, I don't believe in the right person at the wrong time. Um, I do. I do. You, you mean you don't believe that people change and evolve over time and need to learn lessons and make mistakes and things like that? Everybody's perfect in your world? Like, must be nice. <laughs> Dark night of the soul. This is when... This is when those programmed thoughts, your, the, your ego sheds away and you stop thinking that way you know compassion unconditional love if you're compassion if you're in your compassion and in your unconditional love and you're a divine feminine and you're an empress then you believe in the right person wrong time i don't even know what is happening in this reading <laughs> it's like turned into like uh, anyway um the comments should be interesting you know, I was, before I understood what it all meant, I was guided to be a counterpart reader. And I actually was afraid of it because of all the mis like the misconceptions out there. So I was like, well, I'll just, I'll, you know, I'll focus on love readings. Um, but clearly it's part of my life path to share my story and share awareness about the Twin Flame journey. Again, I saw something really interesting yesterday, not about the Twin Flame journey, but it was like somebody made just a comment about believing in things. And, you know, for those of you who, when you're struggling to believe in something, remember this, this is what I'll leave you with. Not, I'm not leaving you right now, but this is what I'll just say about this. When you're struggling to believe in this, Remember, we used to be convinced the world was flat. Okay? <laughs> so things change. Um, 
And just to get like, again, this is a divine feminine reading. Um, there are different waves of twin flames. So each wave of twin flame has a mission. And some of those twin flames are meant to awaken to unconditional love and help change, you know, the opinions of all this. Anyway, uh, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop geeking out right there. But I do believe in the right person on the at the wrong time. That is, you know, counterparts come together before they're ready. They meet before they are ready. They meet as their unhealed caterpillar versions of themselves. Usually it's short-lived, enough to like explosions. I've never felt this way before. This is, you know, intense, insane chemistry. I've never felt a bond like this before. And then there's separation. There's triggers. Um and you're meant to come back as butterflies. So I do believe in right person, wrong time. This is coming out that this is the right person at the wrong time. So like that devil card we saw, I feel like you and this person were meant to illuminate your shadows. And then the healing happens in separation. And it can be super frustrating, you know, and confusing. I get it. <clears throat> Why are all these cards flipped around? All right, so let's keep going. Divine Feminine. We have Cosmic Healing. So needing, believing that as you heal, listen, your cards, you, listen, like I said, I feel like for some of you, you are wondering why can I not forget about this person? Because we've got dreams and we've got cosmic healing coming out, showing, you know, that you have the ability to help this person heal by focusing on your journey. The feminine leads the way. I didn't make that rule. It's a thing. And actually in this deck, I'm about to show you the chariot card, this deck yesterday, when I was looking at it, I was getting all kinds of downloads about counterparts looking at this tarot deck. Um, and one of the things I was seeing, let me just see if it's here. Hmm. Would you be on the top? Where are you? I have to show you this. I was getting a lot of counterpart downloads from this deck and look at this card, the chariot. And we have the feminine leading the way. So, you know, If you want to be in union with your twin flame, the answer is to work on yourself, to heal yourself, to keep moving forward, not to wait, not to chase, get on your soul's path, whatever that is. If you feel like you have a gift, if you feel like you have untapped potential, if you feel like you have psychic abilities, if you feel the need to guide others in their journeys, there's a reason you feel that way. The feminine leads the way. Tiger, divine feminine energy. Anyway, I just had to say it. I'm getting really counterpart nerdy in this reading, but I don't care. Um, I'm going to let my freak flag fly. <laughs> so we do have dreams. So you could be having a lot of dreams about this person. And these dreams are helping heal this connection between you, I'm hearing. But look at this. Your cards, we have the one. We had unconditional love. And we, we have red thread bond. So you do feel you know, like there's a higher purpose to this connection. You feel connected to this person all the time, even in separation. And I'm hearing frustratingly so. Like sometimes you're frustrated with the fact that you cannot let go of this person's energy. You could even be questioning, like you might be the person that is like, is watching this reading chasing? I don't believe that it is. You know, I don't believe that it is unless, you know, you're becoming obsessive about it. But Anyway, we have the one and red thread bond. This is all your energy, my friend. Um, and you have to believe if you feel this way about this person, it's not one-sided. You can't just feel this way delusionally about someone, not even like, uh, not even if you're trauma bonded to them. Yes, trauma bonds exist. Yes, karmic connections exist. But there's no mistaking what this is. Deep down, you know, and you have to validate your journey for yourself, if that makes sense. Anyway, let's get some tarot for you, my friend. 
and we'll see what's happening here. And just thinking back to that first part, we had dating. And, you know, you could be someone who's thought about dating, who's tried dating, and still feels this codependent attachment to this person or still feels that red thread bond. Um, again, there's a reason you feel that way. So let's get some tarot for you to see what you need to hear. <clears throat> So, my Divine Feminine, what do you need to hear? We have Eight of Cups and we have Six of Swords. So there is an energy of, you know, acceptance, releasing this, leaving the past version of this person in the past. If they want to, they I'm hearing they will heal and, and evolve and meet you where you are. But sometimes the only thing to do is to walk away. So you could have been someone who's, you know, walked away from this connection, Eight of Cups, and then Six of Swords, you know, having a hard time moving on. <sighs> My friends, the first card out is the lovers when I cut the deck. Divine love connection. And we had the devil was the top. The top card was the devil. The bottom card was the lovers. And that is, you know... When the devil card and the lovers appear together like that, it signifies, symbolizes a connection that you have this insane love connection and you it's like a connection that you can't let go. It's almost unbreakable. Even if you try, like even if you try and cut cords, even if you try and forget about them, even if you try and move on, you know, you still feel that connection, soul, like soul connection. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm laughing at myself because it can be frustrating. Um, so anyway, and you know, sometimes on the counterpart journey, this lover's card can symbolize needing to choose yourself over your counterpart because they're not, you know, they're not where they need to be healing wise or vibration, like vibrational frequency wise. Sometimes, you know, it's about choosing yourself and your own self-worth and your own self-love. I refuse to let your drop down. I refuse to let anyone take advantage of me. <laughs> That's the affirmation that dropped down when I'm talking about choosing yourself. I'm shaking a little. Gemini energy. And we have the nine of wands. And the nine of wands is about, you know, it's about perseverance. It's about someone who's wounded and weary from battle, but perseveres with hope and determination it's it's an uphill battle I'm hearing it's about self-improvement as well it's you know it's really interesting again I felt so many downloads and connect like twin flame connections with this deck it was absolutely crazy I've you know yes that happens with my decks but not in that twin flame way um, I don't know if the person who created this was a counterpart because that's what these, the energy that comes through. But if you look at this card, something struck me about this card yesterday. This nine of wands can be um, like defensiveness when it comes to self-improvement or it can be like, I don't need to change. I don't need to work on myself. And it's giving me hermit, like this is just, it gives me hermit energy. Like, so, you know, it could be that you needed to choose to go within and reflect about this connection, to learn about yourself, to improve. Possibly your person was, you know, hesitant to reflect and get into that hermit energy. Anyway, I think it's interesting because that truly does look like the hermit. And nine of wands is also an energy of like nine, I'm hearing independence, um, the self. So I do feel like right now the two of you or you are choosing to work on yourself. You know, you can't control what this person does. You can't control if this person heals. You can't control if they come back, but you can control your own journey. You can control your own healing. Um, anyway. 
so let's see what you need to hear other than that. <laughs> what does this Divine Feminine need to hear today? We have the Eight of Pentacles, Soul Path, my friend. Get to work on investing in yourself, investing in your gifts, your skills, your creative skills, I'm hearing. Um, I need to get... What makes you happy that's not this person is what you should be focusing on, I'm hearing. So things that cause you to lose time, you know. Um, I bet you with this person you lost sense of time. Anything that you do where you stop worrying about the 3D world when you stop, because time is an illusion. I hate to break it to you. <laughs> but when you stop, anything that you do where you stop worrying like, oh, I have that appointment and I have to go do this and I have to go that. I wonder, I wonder what time it is. How much time is this taking? How much time do I have left before supper? Like anything that takes away that control of time is what your soul wants to be doing. Your soul doesn't care about what time it is. Does that make sense? So, you know, you guys know when I do these readings, I never look at the, like, of course I have the clock on my phone. But when I'm doing like over the head readings, I never time them. I lose sense of time. And from the moment that I got into tarot and spirituality, the minute that I started touching these cards, I lose sense of time. Like I no longer care what time it is or what needs to happen. Um, so finding what you lose yourself in is what I'm hearing, not yourself, what you lose time in. And yeah, what you lose, you kind of lose yourself in the moment. Um, that's what you're supposed to be doing with your time and energy. So if that is singing, if that's cooking, you know, we don't all have to be psychics. Um, but with this eight of pentacles, this is about investing in yourself, you know, this is about investing, like I said, in your creative skills. Um, let me get my book. Hang on. On my journey to get the book, a twin flame deck jumped, jumped into my hand. So I took it. No, I'm just kidding. I picked it up. But my guides were like, get that deck. So I did. So I do feel like right now you're supposed to be working on your soul path. Like there comes a time where you're looking at your twin flame connection and you're like, there's nothing I can do about this. Um, so I'm going to work on me, you know, eight of pentacles, dedication, developing skills, showing your talent. So there's something here about figuring out what your talent is. What is it that you're supposed, what path are you supposed to be on? What are you supposed to be sharing with the world? And then dedicating yourself to that. It's not about distracting yourself either. It's about investing in you. You know, even Eight of Pentacles, investing in yourself, investing in your own healing. Um, that's what I don't understand about the people who are like, I don't want to heal, but I want my person back. It's like, well, anyway. And Nine of Cups, what, what do you lose yourself in? What makes you happy? What is your heart calling for you to do like what again what do you lose time in I keep hearing what do you lose time in because that's how I figure out what is aligned with me and not aligned with me if imagine you know let's just say you're a divine feminine who works like a nine to five job <laughs> just kidding I used to work one but think about how many times you're looking at that clock thinking is it three o'clock yet? Is it five o'clock yet? Is it break time yet? Is it time to go home yet? Um, that's showing you that you're, there's something missing. There's something lacking, you know? Anyway, what was I looking at? Nine of cups. I'm looking at the career because I'm hearing, you know, I'm hearing a message of you focusing on yourself right now. Satisfying career. What satisfies you? Um, what again makes you happy what is your heart telling you to do when not when it comes to love when it comes to you all right let's see what else you need to hear we have the queen of swords know your worth what was that drop down I refuse to let anyone disrespect my energy or whatever the drop down was. Um, know your worth. And listen, my friends, there's something here about you speaking your authentic truth. 
So sharing your voice with the world, sharing your authenticity with the world, finding your true, finding your true authentic self and your authentic voice, you know, learning how to put up boundaries, how to respect your energy, know your worth, not let people walk all over you, not let someone mistreat you, not let someone, you know, abuse you. Um, And again, there's something here about sharing your voice with the world, your truth with the world. What is your truth? This is actually a very nice change. <laughs> so Queen of Swords. Mm -hmm. So making decisions based on facts, not relying on emotions. So again, you could have had to stand in your power with this person. And maybe now you're like, maybe you've, you know, queen of swords them. I know my worth. And maybe now you're like, I want to chase them. Or you're trying not to chase them. You're trying not to chase them saying, but do you know my worth? <laughs> have you figured out my worth yet? <laughs> And we have Queen of Pentacles. So there's another message of um, career is what I'm hearing. So maybe you need to get a mentor, Queen of Pentacles. Maybe there's someone who can mentor you in this. You know, maybe you're someone who's coming into acceptance that, yes, I am on the twin flame journey. I'm going to, you know, start figuring out what the divine feminine is supposed to do when you hit that wall, um, finding a mentor in that sense. Like even this is a form of mentorship and advice. And, you know, there's something here. It's reminding me of the readings I've been doing, like the career ones where your, your gift, your voice here, your truth, your authentic self, you could turn that into something that, you know, brings you financial stability for the rest of your life, financial freedom. Um, Queen of Pentacles, right now your advice is to know your worth and to nurture yourself, to focus on your gifts, your hidden talents, things like that. Focus on your home, focus on your children, focus on self-love, I'm hearing. Know that everything you need is comes within you like the queen of pentacles doesn't need anybody the queen of pentacles knows that whatever she needs she possesses um so you know there's a message here about you know look at look up what the queen of swords is all about not just a little snippet <laughs> look in a book or look online about the history or you know, the story of the Queen of Swords and the story of the Queen of Pentacles, because that's the energy that you're meant to be investing in right now, is your Queen of Swords and your Queen of Pentacles, knowing your worth and nurturing yourself, especially if you're coming from a connection where there was back, there was like that backstabbing energy or that toxic energy, especially. And we'll just get, what was I showing you? I was showing you the Nine of Cups. That wasn't the Queen of Pentacles. This is the Queen of Pentacles. <laughs> That's the Queen of Pentacles. There she is. <laughs> I'm not talking about gender. I was showing you the Nine of Cups. Um, and we have Three of Swords on the bottom, separation. So while you're in separation, you know, focus on the Queen of Swords energy, the Queen of Pentacles energy, and the Eight of Pentacles, okay? What advice do you need to know about your counterpart? What do you need to know about your counterpart? We have temperance. Balancing of divine feminine, divine masculine energy. So something was out of balance here. And that's what happens. Let me just explain it. You come together like this. First meeting, you're aligned. And then you start to, that energy starts to fluctuate. And it starts to become an imbalanced. And you have to balance when it comes to your counterpart, that thing I was watching also says you have to balance your own feminine and masculine energies if you want to come into union. So if you're stuck in more feminine or masculine energy or distorted energy, 
you can't come into union. Now, something, there needed to be a separation to restore balance here. And, you know, for what you need to know about your counterpart, there's something here about patience. Um, you'll need to be patient because healing takes time. Balancing these energies take time. This person, it feels like maybe they were acting really inconsistent with you because their energy was so out of balance. And again, if you think about the way that I always think about temperance when it comes to like energy exchange is you like think about temperance. Sometimes you see them with a cup, right? So if this is your person and this is you and you're a chaser and you're like, I'm just going to pour some energy in here. I'm going to pour some more. And they're like, here's a little bit. Here's a little bit. And you're like, okay, well, I'm just going to give you some more. Eventually it becomes completely imbalanced. Um, and that's when, you know, resentments happen, arguments happen, people push each other away. <clears throat> anyway, so very interesting. We also have five of pentacles on the bottom. So it could have been, you know, there could be fear of abandonment, which was coming through in that codependent energy, fear of abandonment, fear of rejection. But it feels to me like while you're working while you're working on yourself, you've got someone feeling very left out. Don't chase them. Let's look at I want to actually look at what your energy is right now. Just I see what you're supposed to be working on, but let's look at your current energy. And then we'll look at theirs really quickly. Interesting. What's going on with you? Your energy is very interesting. So there could be some type of wound or healing that you need to do that you've been running away from or you've been avoiding. Maybe you don't even know. Um, I'm feeling called to mention you could have wounds that you don't even remember right now that come from your childhood. When I started working on childhood healing, and I started doing meditations about going, you go, you like visualize going back in time and meeting your inner child when they need you, like in a situation that was hard for you. When I did that, I don't have a lot of memories of when I was a kid because of childhood trauma. But when I started revisiting those memories that I did have, and like in therapy, when I started unpacking the baggage, I started having memories of things that I had blocked out like that would come up and I'd, I'd be like, did that actually happen? Like I completely forgot about that. Um, so you could have some, you know, you could have some wounds in there that you haven't even, that you didn't know were there. This person could have triggered some of those wounds that you didn't even know were there. Now your current energy is interesting because you've got 1010 coming through. And 1010 is an energy of um, like cycles, ending cycles, completion. Um, so I do feel like there's been, you know, an ending between you and your person. I'm just, I'm just going to take a minute here. So there is an energy of I don't feel like you're someone who is based on the cards that are coming out. I don't feel like you're someone who is emotionally fulfilled and stable right now, but I feel the opposite of that. I feel not that you're unstable, but you have the 10 of cups and the 10 of pentacles coming out together. And what's with it? The Six of Cups and the Seven of Swords. So it feels like, I don't feel like you're someone who is in Ten of Cups and Ten of Pentacles energy. Maybe you are. Um, that's not really the vibe of this reading though. So when that happens, I go to, I'm feeling the reversal of those. And Ten of Cups is inner work is needed. So right now it feels like you could be reflecting on what you can do. Remember I said, you can't control what this person does. You can control what you do. So it feels to me like right now there's an energy of needing to, inner work is needed specifically with childhood wounding, perhaps with the six of cups. There's also an energy of longing, you know, and nostalgia. So you could very much be 
someone who is coming into that unconditional love realization that you you feel that this person is your happily ever after. It's one, one, one here. But what I'm hearing is that inner work is needed when it comes to childhood wounding or childhood wounds or wounds that you got in past connections, even within this connection, I'm hearing. We've also got the Ten of Pentacles here. So I was hearing that um, other people's opinions, your family's opinions could be, you know, getting you down right now. Maybe your family doesn't like this person. Um, we have conflict between love and family outside opinions of love. And how how much have I been harping on about the opinion of the twin flame journey? You know, it's scary out there. And like, even in my comment section, people will be like, telling other people, you're freaking delusional for believing in this. That's a clear indication that that person who's talking about you being delusional is not a twin flame. Because clearly they don't know. But anyway, so it could be that, um, what was I just, it could be that outside opinions of soul connections are starting to get you down. You know, um, you could be struggling with the opinions of others and again there's this energy of more inner work is needed and we do have six of cups so you very much are in an energy of you know thinking about this person possibly feeling the soul connection the red thread bond and again I have to tell you if you're feeling that they're feeling that it's not one way it's not I've even seen therapists or like doctors on TikTok saying that, you know, if you can't forget about someone, it's because they are also holding on to that energetic bond. Um, healing after breakup, six of cups. So you're trying to heal. Love it. So you're working on your inner healing. You're working on your stability. Maybe you're working on not letting other people's opinions bother you about this connection, this journey. Now let's just have a little look-see at your person's energy. I'm going to put the six of cups back on the bottom. And we're just going to peek at their energy. Although, like I said, this reading feels like it's meant to be about you. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Feeling very left out in the cold from you. But look at what's happening in their energy based on what you're doing in yours. Oh, I didn't even see you under there. We have a surprise. <gasps> we have a surprise card. We have two surprise cards. These were hiding. We have the four of wands and the wheel of fortune. Changes, you know, um, I'm hearing a turning point. And with the Four of Wands, I, I have to mention it, on the Four of Wands, sometimes you see two towers, you know, symbolic of the fact that you both need to work on your own stability and come into inner union with yourself before coming back together. Um, but sometimes you see two wands on each side. And I always say when I see that, that I don't see it in this one, but I'm going to mention it anyway. Um, when you see two wands on one side, two wands on the other, it's very symbolic of the journey you both have to take and the patterns that you need to change before coming into union. It's also, to me, symbolic that if you are working on your patterns and your healing, that this person is being affected by it, the Wheel of Fortune. Now, for your person's energy, we have... The Hierophant and the Ace of Swords. So this is someone who's having a spiritual breakthrough. You know, like a spiritual awakening or a realization. Your energy, Dark Knight of the Soul. Your person is mirroring you. This person is having a realization about, you know, maybe they're having a realization about how they feel about commitment. Maybe they're having a realization that they ran from commitment because of something that happened in their childhood. Maybe they're having a realization that they feel this soul bond with you, you know? And we see the Four of Wands and the Wheel of Fortune. So there's changes happening as you work on yourself. Um, so yeah, let's just see how they're feeling about you just to, you know, 
spell it at you. <laughs> Let's see how they're feeling about you. I'm hearing You Feel Like Home to Me by Chantel, Chantel Kraviacic or whatever her name is. Because we have the four of wands there. And as I was shuffling, I was I was hearing you feel like home to me. Um, we have the knight of cups for how they're feeling. In Their intuition, their heart says it's you. Even if they're not, you know, taking action towards you. That's someone who, you know, the knight of cups follows their heart. So this is someone who is being guided to follow their heart. This is someone who intuitively feels this connection with you. The Knight of Cups is also about rekindling. Well then, so your person, it seems they have regrets about the past here, Five of Cups, so they have sadness and regret. You know, this could have been someone who made promises that they couldn't keep. Maybe they promised to change. Maybe they did something to you and they were like, I'll promise I'll never do that again. And then they did it again. And, you know, know your worth, Queen of Swords. But anyway, um, this image, this person is standing in front of an image of the person they love. It almost looks like a shrine. So I'm not saying this person has a shrine of you, but, you know, what did I say? Your energy, Six of Cups. If you're thinking about them, they're thinking about you. And the chariot on the bottom shows forward movement. It shows momentum. Um, beautiful. So they could have regrets over how they, you know, how much action they gave or how much time and energy they gave this connection. Take it as it resonates. Um, so let's look at future energy between you and your counterpart. Although this feels, again, more like a you reading. <clears throat> future energy we've got the king of pentacles here between you and your counterpart that is long-term commitment that is abundance generous provider serious relationship emotionally and financially secure so if this person knight of cups isn't emotionally secure right now it's showing this is future potential. So this person, it shows the potential of them coming back towards you. Emotionally and financially stable, wanting a serious relationship. Let's get one more burping for confirmation. <laughs> Look at this. The energy they're in right now is the chariot. So they're, you know, they're, there is forward movement. Future energy, we have the four of cups, which is um, a new outlook on love. It's a new outlook on this person. Um, so I feel like future potential, you're going to see this person really invest in you. You're going to see them take a lot of action towards you. You're going to see them communicate a lot with you you're going to see rapid change and rapid growth with the eight of wands and the four of cups. Like I said, they're showing you a new, they're showing you a new side of them. There's been rapid change. There will be rapid change, rapid growth, and they're going to be someone who, you know, I'm hearing pursues this, which maybe in the past they weren't pursuing you, you were chasing them. So take it as it resonates, my friend. However it resonates, take it. <laughs> So I do want to get you a Twin Flame card for its Twin Flame Ascension. I don't, I don't, I don't <clears throat> get this deck a lot in my readings. It's only when I feel called to for my Twin Flames on the journey. You know, the Twin Flames who are committed to the journey. I have to take this card. I have to take this card. <clears throat> Excuse me, my throat's closing over. We have 7-7 seven, seven, heal abandonment. Time to forgive. So I don't actually know. I've never gotten this card. Heal abandonment. But that was the... 
So this is a slate card, a powerful life lesson that will expedite your ascension pro progress process. And remember the first three cards. Remember the first three cards. The first three cards were about codependency, fear of abandonment, abandonment wounds, rejection wounds. So I have to take this. I didn't even look it up. It's on page 34, which is interesting because three and four remind me of the emperor and the empress and um, balancing those energies within temperance. So let's read this card to you, my friend. You have experienced abandonment in multiple lifetimes. Wounded stories are subconsciously causing you intense soul pain that makes you easily triggered when you experience rejection. This card implies that you need to heal traumatic experiences and the influence of unhealthy relationships. You have been abandoning your own needs. Remember everything that I was talking about which is the same as not loving yourself. You will move beyond the fear of abandonment when you realize that you caused yourself, you've caused yourself this pain because you're separated from yourself. It is time to forgive yourself for not standing up, showing up, and speaking up for your need to be heard, loved, or respected by others. You may have been taught that to experience love, you must earn the love you seek. This produces the need for approval and creates feelings of rejection and feeling left out or left behind, causing you to justify your actions. Letting go of your old identity is painful. Dark night of the soul. Letting go of your old identity is painful because you experience the death of your former self and patterns. Yet, as, yet it is necessary for you to create space for your new identity. I have crazy goosebumps. I have crazy goosebumps. <laughs> for some reason, I'm feeling called to pull out this one, which I think I talked about in, if you watched, if you guys watched that reading the other day, I did the twin flame reading an hour and 44 minutes. I was like, nobody's going to watch this. <laughs> like Nobody's going to watch that. And you know, after I did that reading, I was exhausted. Like I was, I was like, I can't even explain it. Do you know how like when you're expecting something to like, it was like anticlimactic. That's what it felt like. Like it was just like I was sitting on the like the edge of all this energy um, for hours after that reading. And I don't think I did readings the next day. Um, what was I going to say? This is not, this is not... This is not what I wanted to read you. I don't know what it is. There's, if it comes to me, I'll read it to you. But that ain't it. That ain't it. So let's keep going. We have transformation. Listen to this. Battle of head versus heart. And what did I say about your current energy? Ten of pentacles opinions about love you know even your ego and I talked about this the other day that if you want to come into union there can't be any doubt that this is your twin flame there can't be any doubt that twin flames exist you need to trust it you need to you need to believe it um so you could be going through a transformation of the head and heart right now beautiful so let's see what this one is it is aqua steps in the take me home ascension pathway so this is something this is a step you need to go through in order to come into union or to go through your ascension hang on or you know maybe you have to find your authentic truth and speak it because i can just stop coughing so transformation battle of head versus heart Pay attention because miracles are unfolding and transformation is occurring even if you don't see it. Remember your person's energy, the chariot, wheel of fortune, four of wands, hierophant, ace of swords. Oh my gosh, I completely forgot. 
Soon your reality will match your internal desires. Rid yourself of doubts and avoid logical reasoning, which can create an inner battle between your head and your heart. If you allow your heart to lead, it will always direct you towards your highest good. Your person's energy, Knight of Cups. And you think about mirroring. I'm. It's all connecting for me right now. So right now you've got your person on the verge or in Knight of Cups energy wanting to follow their heart. And if you are sitting there following your head, it's it's creating a blockage. Does that make sense? So right now, knowing that your person is in the energy of wanting to follow their heart, you need to follow your heart right now. You need to lead with your heart, not with your logical brain, not with your ego, not with your, you know, am I delusional? Can we just stop asking ourselves that, please? I feel like when we ask ourselves that, we validate the fact that we might be delusional and we're not. We've got it all figured out. It's everybody else that's delusional. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But seriously. So remember, your person is in a heart-led space right now. So to work with that energy, you need to lead by your heart. If you allow your heart to lead, it will always direct you towards your highest good. This card indicates that you are at a make it or break it point. So you could be, this could be one of your major blockages is not trusting in the journey, not believing in it, doubting it, like thinking, is it really real or am I just imagining this? Um, or that energy of why is this happening to me? It's getting into that energy of knowing that it's happening for you, not against you. Anyway, so... This card indicates that you are at a make it or break a point, causing you to resist change and avoid taking necessary actions. However, facing your fears will lead to tremendous transformation. Remember that obstacles are only teachers. Stay focused on the higher perspective and steer away from fear, making fear-based decisions. Tune into your inner voice and listen to your heart. Experiencing emotional highs and lows is normal but don't be rash in taking action. So I have to go back here because there's also this line that you are at a make it or break it point causing you to resist change. So if you're, if you're someone who's sitting there like, I'm just, I'm, should I reach out? Shouldn't I? Should I chase them? Shouldn't I? Should I reach out? Should I reach out? Should I reach out? You know, I'm hearing don't do it. I'm hearing Maybe in the past you would have reached out. This time you need to change what you're doing. Anyway, don't be rash in taking action. Take time to review your circumstances in your heart instead of reacting from your head. And everything in the... I, I saw a thing about chasing and the feminine chasing. It's It all comes from your ego. When you want to chase, when you want that validation that they're thinking about you, when they you want that validation that, you know, if you reach out, they'll still answer you, you know, um, that comes from the ego. <clears throat> if you are being guided to end a relationship, change careers, move, or just forgive your past and yourself, follow the direction of your heart. So you could be someone who's energetically forgiving this person, and it could be like, it could be that you're being guided to forgive them and not hate them and not be like, my person's such a jerk. You know, you guys know what I say. Um, and this is saying to follow the direction of your heart, even if your mind is like, but that person's a narcissist. But if that person loved me, they wouldn't have blah, 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 blah. It will always lead you towards your destiny. We'll just get one more for you if I have time. Let's see. One more. We have, I'm, I'm going to read both of them. We have spiritual awakening, shift or be shifted. And we have, because your energy, six of cups came out, we have practice self-love, nurture your inner child. So I'm going to read these two and then that'll be the end of the reading. <laughs> so spiritual awakening is a card steps in the take me home ascension pathway so steps you can take to help your ascension what is it spiritual awakening 42 and you had dark night of the soul and remember your person 
is having a spiritual awakening, Hierophant, Ace of Swords. What did I say that page was on? Oh, it's right here. Your soul is waking up and is ready to spiritually evolve. So I'm, I'm not going to... I asked for one card and two cards came out. And the fact that your person has Hierophant and Ace of Swords, this might be your person's energy. And for you, you had inner work, like self-love. We talked a lot about self-love. And here we have practice self-love, nurture your inner child. So I feel like... I asked for one card and two came out. So I feel, again, Ace of Swords, Hierophant. This is your person's card, I believe. The evolutionary process is activating your divine blueprint so that you can live your destiny. This could also be you, Dark Knight of the Soul. This card implies that you are in the midst of a spiritual awakening and are shifting away from ego-driven ambition to find more fulfillment in your life, love, and livelihood. So Ten of Cups... Ten of Pentacles, you could be realizing that, you know, life isn't all about work and money. To align with your heart's desires requires that you make major life adjustments, which can turn your world upside down with respects to relationships, where you live, your job. Choosing freedom in all areas of your life gives you permission to make choices about the direction of your journey and guides you towards your highest good. Don't let fear paralyze your actions which will prevent you from living in alignment with your highest truth. Taking action invites the universe to intervene on your behalf, redirecting your path, assisting you to take the necessary action to shift or you'll be shifted. Making life changes, changing decisions is not easy. However, altering your thoughts about the process will enable you to integrate these changes in a productive manner. And I swear that's your person's energy right now. I think it's your energy as well. I think there's mirroring. <coughs> Excuse me. But your person is being called to take action towards making changes in their life. The chariot, the wheel of fortune, the four of wands. And they're, it's kind of like they're at this pivotal moment. Um, so the more you trust in this, the more you follow, find out what your path is and follow it, the more they do. And then we have this one. Self-love is a pre prerequisite for a heart-centered life. If you want the ultimate relationship, it starts with the relationship you have with yourself. Practicing self-love impacts your thoughts, feelings, emotions, choices, and actions, and your relationships. The ability to love yourself is a direct reflection of how you perceive who you are in everyday life. You have experienced feelings of being unloved in many lifetimes that has left your inner child feeling neglected, causing you to feel separated from your inner source of love. When you feel hurt and rejected, it causes your heart to close off, most likely by taking things personally. Yes, this trigger these bleh, this triggers you to react according to suppressed emotions, including feeling unworthy of true love. This card indicates that you should listen to your inner voice. When you nurture your inner child, it creates a safe haven, which helps you feel respected, heard, and loved because your needs are being met. This enables you to master the art of true love by overcoming difficulties that prevented you from experiencing loving relationships. All right, so my friends, I'm going to leave it here. I'm sending you lots of love and light, my divine feminines, and I will see you again soon. Um, I'll see you next time. Take care of yourselves. Bye.